hello, 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 hello. Deniso Chaponda here. Some of you may have been watching my comedy videos about my struggles with my bank after they froze my account. I am very happy to report that my accounts have been unfrozen. I have money again. So why am I making this video? Well, actually, it's because I had a plan. I expected it to take around a week for them to decide what to do with my account. So I had decided to put out a comedy video every day chronicling what was going on and sort of dissecting currency and banks and poverty and how we deal with problems with banks. Now, because they gave me my money back, I feel it was de disingenuous to keep posting these videos where I apply pressure on the bank and criticize banking because, well, they gave me my money back. Thank you. Also, thank you all of you who watched my video, people who liked the video, who retweeted the video. Perhaps you helped in expediting the process because I imagine most institutions do not want a renegade comic defaming them all over Twitter and Facebook. But at the same time, I just thought I should talk people through my process. So this is not a comedy video. If you're looking for a comedy video, go to my channel. I have lots of other videos, lots of jokes which are available. This is more about the comedy process because sometimes people are interested in my process. And I think this is a very good way to illustrate how I went from one incident, one incident of my bank being frozen and expanded it into something that would have been seven days of jokes. And you don't want to be repetitive. So I came up with seven different angles and seven different ways I was going to approach this and keep people interested, keep people coming back. I wrote all my ideas on little note cards. I always write jokes on note cards because you can change the order, you can shuffle them around. You can, if it's a bad joke, you can throw it away. I just find it very good. I, I always start with note cards and then if I'm building a show, they go from note cards to a, uh, a spreadsheet and then they go from a spreadsheet to mind maps on my iPad and that's sort of how it goes from idea in the brain to papers to software then back into my brain for memorization so that's the full life of a Deliso Chaponda joke now the five themes the five ways I was going oh sorry seven seven because it was going to be it was a seven day plan is that I thought it would take seven days. So day one, which is a video which exists, I think it's called Comedian Begs Audience to Tell His Bank to Give Him His Money Back, something like that. That video was essentially day one, what happened, right? I was trying to tell people my bank has frozen my account and then I was just talking through what that means plus jokes. So it was jokes like, hey, I can log in to my account. I can look at all of my money. I can't touch it. I can look at it. I can't touch it. It's like a strip club, right? So simple jokes where I'm telling you what's happened, but I'm adding absurd parallels. I am adding a little bit of emotional, um, just telling you how I'm feeling, my frustration, but still keeping it light. That was day one, right? Day number two, which also exists, uh, is where I started to think about why did it happen to me? Why me and not someone else? This is when you consider, is it a race thing? Is it because I have a foreign name? Or maybe it's because of my business choices. Maybe it's because of my investors. And that was day number two, when I try to think of why me? Try to put myself into the mind of a bank and think why they would target the Lee Search Ponda, plus jokes. That was day one, that was day two. Day number three is now a theory. Day number three, I started making notes for, but I did not actually produce, right? Because day number three was gonna be yesterday and it was gonna be where I tried to look at what you can do if you come across a situation where you think a bank is mistreating you, right? Because I realized if I keep it always about myself, it gets boring to people. People care about themselves, their lives, their friends, their family. And if you watch a comedian and they're just talking about themselves in a way that doesn't resonate with you, 
it's very easy for you to check out. So often I always start with a joke, which is very personal, and then I try to find it a universal thing. And uh, so I was gonna now wanna talk about what you can do in such situations and the problems of it, plus jokes, of course. Now, what I was most likely gonna talk about was the financial ombudsman service. Now, this is a FOS that exists in the UK. If you have a dispute with your bank, you can go to the financial ombudsman service to help you. I would have had to be a bit like a journalist in that I would have had to do a lot of research about them. I would have tried to speak to a financial ombudsman because there has been a lot of bad press in 2019 about the financial ombudsman service saying because they're swamped with PPI claims, it takes them sometimes four months, sometimes 10 months to respond to people. And yet it's a very essential service. So I think I would have tried to mock the their failures while also pointing out that this is very essential and um i'm not sure how i would have done it because a lot of it would have come from the research i would have spent around two hours to get around a, a good three minutes of jokes it usually takes an average of two hours for me i'm sure they're faster comedians and i'm sure they are slower comedians so that's what i was going to do for day number three and i already started doing some research for it so uh, just for a, a, a little sense of it, you see, I should have planned all of this earlier, but for a little sense of it, I was gonna talk about, um, yes, here it is, the financial, I, I was gonna talk about things that have happened between uh, the banks over the last year, right? So there's, like, here it is. So an anonymous senior staff of the Financial Ombudsman Service talked about how consumers can wait up to 10 months before their files are examined, and it's because of a tsunami of PPI claims. These are all things which I could milk for humor. How? There is something inherently sad but funny about your only resource being something that you can only get in 10 months, and you need your money tomorrow. So I would have, I would have, I would have made it work. Okay. Day number three. Oh, sorry. That is day number three. Day number four would have been then trying to go broader and trying to say, okay, who else has this happened to? Now this would be a matter of spending a few hours. This wouldn't have just been two hours. It probably would have been a five hour day because it would have spent several hours looking through the internet resources, trying to find other people who this has happened to. It would have meant reaching out to all of my followers on Twitter, on Facebook, saying, hey, if you ever had your bank account frozen, please let me know what happened. I already had someone let me know that uh, when they had uh, an inheritance, the bank froze their account. So I would probably have called this person, asked them more about what happened. And let me tell you this, legislation is full of loops and illogical things that you can make jokes about. One of my most common ways of making jokes is I just do a logical loop. So for example, I did a joke um, years ago, it used to be my opening joke, essentially saying, I moved to the UK because, um, you know, uh, racist people are saying immigrants are taking all the good jobs, all the good women. And I'm like, wow, that sounds like a good deal to me. That's great advertising. So I'm taking their logic taking it literally and therefore being funny. So again, I would look at all of the logic that people have been put through. Why did they block your account? I guarantee you some of them would be illogical because that is the nature of legislation. It is necessary, but it often puts you in situations where like for immigration, they'll say, okay, you only can get this if you have a job but you can only get a job if you have your immigration papers. They're these kind of loops, which I would have mocked. Okay, then we go to day number five, day number five, which would be where I try to look at society as a whole. And I look at our dependence on banks, our dependence on currency, what it means that we're now moving towards digital currency. This is where I would probably do jokes about cryptocurrency. I might do a joke about there's a person I know who keeps all their money in their house. They don't use banks. They've hidden it somewhere in their house. And I'd mock this person, but I'd also think about how he would never be in this kind of situation. Um, I would talk about 
just generally banking and uh, currencies. I've not written these jokes, so I don't know what would have come out. This is actually part of the problem of being a comedian, is when something bad happens to you, you get inspired and you can write about it very well. Now that the problem is over, I guarantee you, if I tried to write these jokes, they would not be as funny as they would have been when I was actually in agony, because agony inspires. If you ever have a time when I am gleeful and happy for a whole year, that will be a terrible comedy show. That I have to be going through some kind of problems for me to write good jokes. Keep that in mind. <laughs> Uh, so that is number five. That was going to be number five, looking at society. And then day number six was going to be where I went a little bit surreal. It's always fun in comedy sometimes to go into the world of imagination, the world of the absurd. And I was now on day number six going to propose a heist. I was going to propose a bank heist that I was going to attack my bank and I was going to drill into their safe and take my money back and I would need a crew. This day I had started to think about. It. This day I had already started to plan. I was very excited about it. In fact, I had already asked a friend of mine to um, to do some of the, uh, the, the graphics for it because what I was going to do is I was going to turn it into an Ocean's Eleven or like an Italian job situation where I needed to get the normal characters you see in that kind of narrative. So like a hacker, a gadget guy, uh, a muscle guy, um, uh, a fast talking con man. And then I would use people from the news to fill each of these roles, right? So the fast talking con man, all I need to find is who is the quintessential person who people don't trust right now. Right? I wouldn't go easy. I wouldn't go to a Donald Trump or something like that because, again, an obvious gag doesn't work. What I'll do is I'll try to find someone people don't trust but isn't the first person you think of. is maybe the second or third person you think of, right? And then what I would do next is I'll say for the hacker. What about for the hacker? I get someone in like Edward Snowden. And then the joke is how do I persuade Edward Snowden to take time off his current book tour to come help me in a heist on a bank. Maybe for my gadget guy, I'll go for someone like Elon Musk because there's something inherently funny about me trying to persuade a gazillionaire to come join my little heist to liberate a few thousand pounds, right? <laughs> I actually, I, 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 I love this idea. I don't know if I can use it for some other reason, but that was what I was going to do. And I was going to come up with I'd already thought of the people I was going to use. The next thing is I would have come up with a plan. The plan would not have been a logical plan. It would have had to be like Looney Tunes. I would have had to be thinking of things like my way to break into the safe would have to be something funny. Everything would be absurd. And that would have been day six. And that would have led to day number seven, the final day, when I would have uh, then either celebrated or mourned. Because all stories have three phases. They have the character, the main character, you, they have their motives. You, dis, you find out what they want. So at the beginning of the seven day journey, you would have found out Deliso wants his money back, right? Then the middle section would all have been act two. It's how am I trying to get my money back? What am I doing? I'm looking into all of my resources. I'm looking into newspapers. And then the final act, the, the, the final act, at the end, I am now revealing, did I get it? Didn't I get it? And day number seven would have been uh, that. I expected it to take about a week because I thought it would take that long. It happened in two days. Uh, and I think this may be partly because of my comedy videos, but maybe not. Maybe I was just lucky. And I'm very glad that it ended early. But day number seven, I would have either celebrated, and for the celebration, I was going to get fake money. I couldn't use real money because I would need a mountain of money and I don't have that much money, right? I'd need it to be Scrooge levels of money and it would essentially be me like 
throwing the money around or maybe i would digitally add me throwing money around like a scrooge and just be like yeah i got my money back maybe i have a cigar maybe i'd play something like the next episode with snoop dogg like da 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 like some kind of denise has got his money back or if they at the end of the seven days either had not got back to me or had decided to close my account or had decided to keep my money if they were allowed to somehow because they had proved I'm a terrorist or something, I don't know, I would then have ended the seven days uh, mourning. So it would either be me standing outside a bank, being very miserable or uh, begging comedy clubs for gigs or something like that. So that would have been the end of the seven days. And uh, that's how essentially I went from idea to not a series, but it's almost the same process I use for my radio show, Citizen of Nowhere, where each episode I have a big theme and then similar to how someone would if they were writing a journalistic article, I break it up into sub themes and then I try to address each theme, but each theme has got its own internal logic. So you could come in day three and only watch day three and still be satisfied. But if you watch all seven days, you get the complete. Now. I don't have to do this and I, I do not feel inspired to write about this and this is the thing is because uh, it's um, life moves on fast I've got so many other things I want to write jokes about and I'm going to write about them I think today I'm going to write uh, about uh, I heard that the first lady of Lesotho is on the wanted list I'm going to uh, research that and write some jokes but just so you know ladies and gentlemen this is how I write jokes and um, thank you for your time and um, thank you for those of you who tweeted or watched my videos where I was begging my bank for my money back. Thank you.